Howdy my fellow wooden waters. The apparatus before you is a little experiment I'm trying to do here to see if I can compress wood gas into this old LPG tank. The idea is not new, others have done it, but what I want to know is how long can the gas be kept in there before it starts to break down. I'd like to think it's got to be at least a week before it starts to fade. Anyway, what I've got is a refrigeratology compressor. That's why my beer is no longer cold. And the intake to the compressor is fed through here. A bubbler with a bit of diesel in it. The idea being that the vacuum side of the compressor will pull wood gas through here after bubbling it through the diesel the diesel being able to get rid of particulates hopefully and also the diesel helping to lubricate the sensitive confines of the compressor tater the gas stream is then fed through this gauge and out to this connection on the LPG tank it's common practice to rip the valves off, off those tanks in order to use them for compressors, but I come up with a simpler way. That is to get a store-bought adapter so you can connect to the gas bottle. And instead of tying the usual burner pipes to it, you get this little thing, a hose barb. And you put it in there, then you use a mixture of solder and solder equal parts solder and solder to bind them together in order to create this assembly that allows me to blow the gas into the tank as well as extract it for test purposes I've made up this flare port which is also a flashback arrester which will hopefully prevent explodations a visitation from Mr. Explody is not welcome. So once the gas has been blown into that tank, I can then pull off that hose and attach this one, the discharge hose, to that burner. I have another flashback arrestor here, made in the same way as simply stainless steel poly pads, which then goes on to a burner that I've been making for use with the Charlie in case we have us another lockdown I run out of cooking gas again. Now what I've found is that um, Charlie gas, wood gas in general, doesn't work with a standard burner. Normally you have a, a gas feed right there and it mixes with air through here and it just will not burn over here. So. The theory I've got in mind is to get this fits over that and deliver the raw gas directly to this plenum without mixing with air, such that it mixes as it emerges, much as we're accustomed to with our flare ports anyway. Going back to this, the gas that will be bubbled through the diesel is being delivered through this hose, fairly small plastic pipe goes over to the Gasomatics 9000 gargle blaster and is attached here. This is recently attached to the plumbing as of last week. Um, to form it like this what I did was I heated the metal and then just kind of shaped it with my finger. Works. No not really. But anyway what happens is um, that takes the filtered gas from the gasifier and delivers it to the compressor system. Now because the compressor runs very slowly I'll have no choice but to run either this flare at the same time in order to keep the gasifier awake or the Gruntmaster 9000 for that purpose. As yeah, I would suggest that that fridge compressor takes the gas out at perhaps 1% of the rate that the engine does. Um, so that's the theory that I'm operating under. So for my first test, once I've set everything up, is um, I'm going to get the compressor delivering gas straight to this burner 
through a um, flashback arrestor and hopefully it will get us a little blue flame over here might have to do it a bit later once the sunshine is no longer a problem but in the meantime I should be able to switch on this compressor and show you a couple of things let's see I've got that loosely sitting on the bottle right now it's going to probably going to pop off and I turn on the compressor yep <laughs> all right so you can see the bubblelogical activity occurring there um, I'm hoping that some small amount of the vapor here is going to be keeping the compressor from seizing up here's the gas outlet and if I block it we do get pressure if I go to the inlet side of things we should hear a bubbling kind of sound microphone on the camera about there whether that's audible I don't know but hopefully that should result in a gas tight wood gas tight system of delivery for the gas to the system here so um, I guess the next thing to do is um, couple this output here over to that burner and uh, let's see, it's very hard work doing this done, right, that was hard work so now, if I block this, we might get a pressure rise here yep, and I think I can hear the gas coming out of the burner that's just air at the moment with a diesel flavour so the next thing really is to set fire to the power flower over here and see whether the ideas that I've got boiling away here actually work now if it all works out as intended I'd like to think that it's possible to put the gas back through this pipe over to the tap off point here and feed the engine with it so as the gasifier doesn't actually have to be started before the engine is will it work? I don't know <laughs> now one of the downsides here is because wood gas is 50 odd percent nitrogen that there tank is going to be holding well half the volume of that gas in there is going to be non-flammable, inert, useless gas and this is where maybe water injection comes in handy as it's going to add hydrogen to the mix and make the gas stronger we'll see about that beginning with the gasifier now just starting it up the whole thing's still cold at the moment not much of a flare there but it will do I'll get at least a horsepower out of that the unfiltered flare at the moment is sort of I guess blorange yeah blorange can't wait for the local supermarket to start selling blorangers once that's warmed up a bit I'll pump the gas through the filters to the secondary flare then I want to see if I can get away without starting the engine for the next stages of this experiment we're getting closer to launch time here here's our secondary flare it's pretty damn hard to see I'll say What I've noticed over the years is that the cleaner the flame is from a wood gasifier, the less light it produces. But you can sort of see it there. The next thing I want to do is turn on the gas stream to see if I can get a flare at the other end once this rather long pipe has finished purging all the air out. 
Wish me luck. The system is active. We have wood gas and air, I expect, being pulled through the boobler and presented to the burner. Now, this thing is actually doing its job. The flashback arrest will stop this exploding if I light it too soon. Well, there's pressure coming out. I'm not sure it's flammable yet, though. You can sort of see a little bit of blue flare there, but I might be a bit too soon in lighting it. I may have to wait just a bit longer. I can almost see the flame. It's a pretty small flame, indicating very low flow rate here. I'll give it a bit more time to settle down and also stoke up the gasifier so I don't want it fading out during this little setup process. Alright, it looks like I'll need to start the engine to really wake the gasifier up and then go back to siphoning some of the gas off. I thought this might be the case. It sort of lights up but not quite. Okay, it's burning now, but only just. You might be able to see it there. But I'm not sure I want to trust that. I want consistently good gas to go into this bottle. So, yep, time to start the grunter, it looks like. The compressor is running on the generator instead of my inverter now. That will save a little bit of sunshine for later. Let's try the flare again, eh? Oh yeah. That's more like it. Instant ignition. Yeah, we can sort of see the flare. I'll give that a couple of minutes to settle down. And then I'll put it into this bottle. The bottle's dead empty at the moment at atmospheric pressure. So it shouldn't take any more than about three weeks to charge it up to about 50 psi, I reckon. So stay tuned. Okie donkey, the output from the compressor is connected up to the gas bottle and the valve is open. Now compressors of this sort are very slow, so I'm not going to make you wait for this to rise to 50 pounds per square inch. Uh, 50 pounds up there on the scale. That's going to take Oh, years today, um, but once it gets there, I figure I'll shut that engine off and then go on from there in a the nice quiet environment. Good thing is the engine lets me know in real time that the gas is good. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it's slowing this down quite a bit by creating a vacuum on the intake side of the compressor. But that's fine. As long as this works, I can develop it further with a view to filling these tanks on a more regular basis. Right, stay tuned. Seventy-five years later. I decided I'd go to 60 PSI in order to cover tax. You know, when you buy gas, you're paying tax. 
So I've added 20% worth of gas tax onto the pressure here. Almost ready to shut the system off. Yeah, that ought to do I reckon. Turn off the power feed for the compressor. Right, that's off. Turn off the gas bottle. And turn this off too. Lights out. Oh, it's so much quieter. Yeah, I like a quiet engine, and that's working real quiet now. Alrighty, now uh, tune back in once I've disconnected this hose from the body and looped back between these in order to test the flare. After that, I want to try it with this burner that I've been making up for use with the Charlec. This one runs on a different principle from a standard burner where you have a mixing system. There is no mixer on this except where the gas comes out of the flare port and burns as a column directly under the pan. Well that's the idea at least. So I've got another flashback arrestor especially for that and for gas pressure control I'm simply going to rely on the valve that comes with these bottles. I do have a regulator that fits on here but it's not really worth using it at the moment. Okie donkey. The next step of the process has been set up. So the output from the butter is being fed into the flashback arrestor. Unfortunately I did have a bit of a gas spill out of the feed hose. And there it is. So how to clean up a gas spill like that? Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Wish me luck. If I if I die, you can have my collection of glass aardvarks. Here we go. Woohoo! We have flame. Not only is it pretty, but it is also blue. Smurfs will be here in no time to collect that. Alright, next stage. Alright, for the next stage you've got this little blower, I mean a blowtorch here, so I don't have to reach over the flame area. Let's get that going a bit more. Turn the gas back on. Woohoo! I have a flame and a fly buzzing around, obviously attracted by something. That is so sweet. Now if I can adapt it to a standard gas burner, I could use this in the kitchen. And I wouldn't have to ever buy this stuff anymore. I can see where our regulator is going to be needed though, this keeps fading because of the maybe a freezing effect. I do notice this is getting pretty chilly. Yeah, that's good for a bit of rice risotto and a, and a wok. Sweet! And I wonder is it possible to run the engine on it? Okay guys and guy yeses, I couldn't resist. I figure if the engine pumped gas into this, then maybe this can pump gas back to the engine. So I've installed the regulator, a flashback arrestor, and of course the existing pipe 
feeding out to the engine room. I've also closed the main valve from the gasifier so the engine can't get gas from anywhere but this little point right here. So, <laughs> will it work? Yeah, I kind of doubt it. As this isn't really set up for running the engine too well. But hey, I might get a couple of putt-putts out of it. Maybe even a vicious explosion. <laughs> That'd be cool. Let's make sure everything's set up. Master valve is open for the engine. Set the air mixture to around about nominal. And, well, here we go. So far it hasn't exploded, which probably means I'll get to live all through the weekend. Turn on the gas. Pressurise the system. And I'll probably have to set the camera down for this. But uh, that there is the only valve left now on the stream of valvey things. So let's see, can the camera see it? Yeah, it can. Alright, wish me luck. Pull the engine first to make sure everything's non exploding. Good, and turn on the gas. Not for long. I wonder, did I use all that up? Oh, I know what's happened. I think uh, it caused this regulator to shut down. I noticed that if the gas goes through them too fast, they actually close. So uh, I'll have to do something about that. But not right now. I think I've proven the point that, yep, it is possible to bottle up your electricity. It's kind of cool because what that lets me do is have the generator going before the gasifier starts up which would be handy on bad days when maybe the battery is flat and the gasifier isn't cooperative. They can at least get some electric tree to start the whole thing off. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, looks like I can demonstrate that thing I was telling you about with this regulator. I got the gas flowing very slowly into this little flare port here. If I wind it up slowly, the flame gets bigger. As you'd expect. But if I go back down to that low ebb again and turn the gas up quickly, you might actually hear this go click. That went click when I did that because there's not enough back pressure on the outlet side of things. I'm assuming it's a safety feature to stop gas from leaking from a, a breach in the hose. I don't know. Anyway, we end up with this teeny tiny tinsy wincy little flame. And if I turn the gas back down and cancel this, you might hear it click again. Might have turned it the wrong way. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you might have heard that. Now that I've turned it back up, I've got me a big flame. I see these yellow tips on there. And I notice that the gas that you buy in these bottles burns with a yellow sooty flame. So what I think I'm seeing is the residue of the original gas burning along with the treasel. So it's a little mixture of petrochemical and shrub you're seeing there. But I think with repeated use, uh, that proportion will change in favour of an entirely blue flame. Pretty, huh?
Hmm, fascinating. Ultimately, yep, I want to run long-term testing on this to see whether the gas breaks down. Um, as it would really suck if it would stay there maybe a couple of days and then break down so it wouldn't burn when it was discharged. So, only time will tell on that one. And finally, I'm able to get one of these things burning with it. But the only reason it's working is because I've got this dodgy arrangement where I'm feeding air, I mean uh, gas, directly into the system without going through a standard nozzle on, that you have on these things. Got this high-tech arrangement of things bodged together from the gas bottle, regulator, flashback arresters and cookie station. Now it's good to see that this actually works as I now have the means by which to cook me a feed should the worst happen as that last zombie invasion we had last year really messed my hair up. Cook you later!